Hello everyone, it's Richard here. In this video, I wanted to go over designing and printing the Octo tool holder I made for the TAS 6, which you can see in the background just here. I also made a few other upgrades um, for more convenience and use uh, using the TAS 6. The TAS 6 itself comes with some really great tools, all that you can see here and a couple you can see on the top. Um, and I really wanted to use the tools all the time and not just put them in a drawer or the uh, the cover that comes with the tools is quite nice but it means hanging it up and basically ferreting around there every time you want to get the tools out. So I was actually inspired to design this Octo tool holder because of a lot of people 3D printing the Hairy Lion. Now that might sound, seem a little strange but the Hairy Lion uses a technique of 3D printing the lion's mane by extruding out filament uh, all around the lion into a uh, cylindrical section that you then clip off. You have all of these spikes sticking out that you then thermoform afterwards with a hairdryer or other thermo um, uh, heating device to actually form the hairy lion and his mane. Now, I don't really have a use for a hairy lion, so um, I wanted to remind really uh, people that. 3D printing of thermoplastics are thermoplastics and they can be reformed after 3D printing. So this is why I designed the Octo tool holder for the TAS 6. Now I wanted to make it really simple. So we used the original Octopus uh, and that's got a slightly lower poly, uh, lower resolution than some of the smoother, more modern um, Octopus designs that this one was based on. So this is actually the original Octopus. Um, and it makes it a little bit easier to modify in CAD tools to allow fitting of tools and things like that. I also wanted to put a clip on the back that was hidden, so you actually have to slide in um, a 3D printed section into this T section up here. You have to undo a few bolts at the top and slide that piece in, and then you can uh, lock and clip the Octo tool holder into the position that you want it. Afterwards then, you can thermoform its legs to wrap around and look a little bit more interesting and also accept some of these tools. So that's basically um, the reason for doing it was really to sort of show and remind people that you can actually form things after 3D printing and that can be a lot easier. If I, ha if I had to print this in one go with all of those legs in these positions it would have used a lot more material, it would have been harder, much harder to, to design, to model and to 3D print and also used a lot of support materials to get the legs in these positions. But using a simple hot air gun, and you can use this, and a heat shield. Now a heat shield is really useful, I just use a piece of aluminium. And what you do is you put the aluminium over the section that you don't want to get heated, and then you can just click and heat up the sections of the tentacles in this case. And the heat shield will actually then just absorb some of the heat and make it easier for you to screen off sections you don't want to get soft. Now you can also, if you're using PLA, and this is PLA, you can mould the, uh, the printed sections in hot water as well. Boiling hot water, dip the tentacles in, you could get uh, a decent amount of manipulation on, on those sections there. But I tend to use a hot air gun uh, for when I'm bending and changing um, filament, I use a hairdryer when all I want to do is fit two pieces together. So if you've got two interlocking pieces that are a bit tight, use a hairdryer on one of the sections and push the other one in and it allows that a little bit better. The hairdryer is a little bit easier to control than a heat gun. So anyway, let's just quickly go over the tool holder. Um, it's, got sec it's got tools for all, everything that, sections for everything that comes with the TAS 6. So you've got your You've got your knife, which is the blade to get everything off. You've got a little scrapey, um, there's a little wire brush, which is really useful for cleaning the nozzle. Uh, you've got a pointy device, which is a little pointy, pointy thing. And you've also got an X-Acto knife. So the X-Acto knife sits at the back. Um, there's also a ruler, but I seem to have misplaced my ruler, my little ruler. It's here somewhere, but that goes slides in the back there. And also the tweezers, which you're going to use quite a lot just to snip off little sections of filament. With the legs, I had to make one into a, a glue stick holder because, well, you use glue stick quite a lot with these machines. And um, that was quite easy to do. I actually joined up that section um, a little bit too tight. So again, just, just 
undoing that. You can have it for an even bigger glue stick as well. This one came with the more Struder, so it's slightly larger. And there's also a few other tentacles if you wanted to add some tools. Now this little pot down here was a bit of an afterthought, but it was because I wanted a way of having all of having all of the Allen keys that you use uh, for the machine in one place. So I made that as a little add-on that can slide into his tentacle and um, do that there. So anyway, I'm going to post this model up on Umagine and I'll put a link in the comments uh, in the description below. So if you'd like to print it out and put it on your TAS or even manipulate it for your own machine, of course it would fit quite happily on other other machines and you could wrap the legs around in different ways. This area down here is a bit of a sort of dead section of the machine, doesn't really do a, a great deal, just avoid blocking the air vents. Also you'll notice at the top here the TAS normally has a little bit of a cutout and that's always bugged me because I like this to be nice and flowing all along the top. Um, so I actually made another section up here which you can't see from that angle but it actually has the the pliers that come with the TAS and they're built into there and also sections for all of the SD cards for the different tool heads and the different filaments that I use. So you've got all of your um, SD cards there with all your G-code on and a pair of pliers if you need to be able to lift or manipulate anything on the machine. So that's it really, I just wanted to go over that and remind everyone that um, thermoforming after 3D printing is a really valid way of turning a flat object or uh, a multi-part object into a more interesting design once it's been 3D printed. So do remember that and um, remember the hairy line. If you need a hairy line then feel free to print a hairy line but otherwise have a think the next time you're designing something about how you can make something easy to print and then thermoform it to create a more interesting structure. Now I've done this with headbands for my daughters, so you print them flat and then you form a thermoform them in hot water around to get exactly the right grip on the hairbands and things, and we made some tentacle ones and all sorts of things. So I always try to think how much easier I can make it if you thermoform afterwards. Anyway, I'll put these links up. Uh, in the background you can see the, the more Struder. I've been doing a lot of work with that, printing off some very large sections, you can see one here that's been printed and also a little bit of tuning with uh, Cura Simplify 3D. I've been using Cura 2.5 which um, doesn't actually come with full integration of the Lulzbot 3D printers yet because I don't think Lulzbot have done that but uh, you can use Cura 2.5 straight away and start tuning it for uh, any of the tool heads in the TAS 6 or any any 3D printer really. So it's been quite interesting going over, these are 0 0.9 uh, and 0 0.5 and I've actually settled on 0 0.25, 0 0.5 and 0 0.75 for using the Moore Struder for printing out various things. So vases are one thing, they're quite easy to do but once it actually gets to proper sized, um, large, fully sort of moving objects um, that aren't just vases just spinning around. You've got to tweak the settings a little bit more. I've been doing a few brackets and things just to test some of the settings there and um, this is quite a large large print. It was quite a, uh, it was about a seven hour, seven hour print. It's got quite a large infill so this is about 600 grams of material because it's actually quite a weighty piece and I noticed I was getting just there's a tiny little band just here where it's knocked uh, the extruder as nozzle is knocked when it's been rapid moving from the back to the front. So I've only seen that on this print and this is actually the only failure I've seen using the TAS 6. I've had problems that I've made um, uh, issue, incorrect settings and that's caused failures but actually during a print that's been going well I haven't actually had any failures apart from this just one minor thing here and that's really because uh, I'm not raising the nozzle quite enough. I'm only raising it 0.1 millimeters and that's not really enough the speed that this is actually traveling, uh, the travel speed is, uh, is, is about 180 millimeters per second on the, the travel moves which is pretty much on its limits um, and also the, the Z lead screw slightly faster than the stock TAS, it's running about 5, five millimeters a second, I think the, the standard is 3 millimeters. so I'm running a little bit faster so I need to jump just slightly more uh, just to stop any of these little little uh, imperfections and it's only knocked 
probably a fraction of a millimetre, but it's just got a tiny line. Luckily, this is all part of a project um, I'm doing so I can sand that down and paint it afterwards so I can get rid of those minor imperfections on the side there. So anyway, thanks ever so much for watching. I'll post the links to the Octo tool holder and this top box holder up here that you can clip on to the side of your TAS 6 if you so wish. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and I'll see you next time.